Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the joy of preaching. And I pray tonight as we preach once again that you'd come in power. And I pray tonight some great truth shall lodge in our hearts so we can serve thee better and love thee more. In Jesus' name, amen. I <coughs> We were in Marshall, Texas the other day, a town where I went to college and where I pastored my first full-time church. And many things that we showed to the people who were there on the tour. But one thing, perhaps that is not as remembered as, as others, much as others, was a little old service station. Probably with one or two little gas pumps and not even a, a concrete or asphalt drive, driveway. <coughs> it was about a block or two from the first apartment that we lived in. We moved to Marshall, oh, my soul, 30, no, 40, no, a long time ago. And uh, so <coughs> we, uh, uh, I was called to pastor a church out the edge of town, outside of town, really. And uh, we still, uh, for a few days or weeks, lived in the apartment. And I guess it was the second or third Sunday <coughs> that <coughs> we're going there. The fellows, uh, the uh, the treasurer of the church was against my being the pastor, and the Sunday school superintendent was against my being the pastor of that church, and the chairman of the board of deacons. All the influential people were for me, however, and uh, so I. Uh, but uh, <coughs> they got together, the treasurer and the Sunday school superintendent and the chairman of the board of deacons got together, decided that they would not pay me my salary. Well. Um, we had no gas, gasoline in the car, and it was about the second or third week that I was pastor there. We had, we had driven across town, probably a, oh, maybe a ten-mile drive, <coughs> and we'd driven across town to church that morning and back home for lunch, and then that night we were going to go back. But we didn't have any gasoline. We didn't have any money. When I say we didn't have any money, I mean we didn't have a dime, didn't have a penny. And uh, <coughs> we, I knew we couldn't get very far. I dead sure knew we couldn't get all the way out to the church. And uh, by, I knew we couldn't get very far, but I got in the car to, to drive to church, <coughs> just like I was going to go there. So uh, how far the car would go, I didn't know, probably a mile, maybe so. But about a block or two down the road from our apartment, the, the car uh, began to sputter and ran out of gas. It just so happened there was a little tiny <coughs> store, <coughs> uh, dash service station, the old-timey kind. You find them out in little rural areas, especially down south you find them. And uh, we, uh, we, the car began to, uh, kept on rolling, it was out of gas, but, and, and I turned up <coughs> and, and stopped just at the pump. I didn't have any money, not a dime. We are going to church that night, people were going to be there, we had no way to get there. And uh, about the time the car stopped, another car drove up, a man got out of the car and said, uh, you, you, Reverend Hiles, he said, uh, my daughter and I visited your church this morning. By the way, he was unsaved. He said, my daughter and I visited your church this morning, <coughs> his 17-year-old daughter. We got home a while ago, and she just said, I, 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 I feel impressed to send $5 to that young preacher and his wife. And uh, said, she sent this $5 to you. I don't know whether you need it or not. And um, I uh, used that $5 to fill, uh, not to fill it up, but <coughs> well, I might have, but to buy gasoline uh, for the car. I'm going to come back to that in a few minutes, and you'll be, you'll be knowing why as I bring the message. The story we read a while ago in Matthew chapter 25, uh, four, verses 14 through 28, deals with our <coughs> a man going, in, going to a far country on a journey, and he gives to his, uh, gives to his servants a portion of money. The t word talent, meaning money, it's like, like we'd say a dollar or ten dollars or a uh, or, um, hundred dollars. But a talent was a portion of money. He gave to one of his men five talents. He gave to another two talents. He gave to another one talent, each having a, a, por a, a, a portion of money. When he returned to see how they had done, the fellow who had the five talents said, I have gone and invested mine, and I have five more talents. I have ten. Jesus said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. He came to the fellow who to whom he'd given two talents. And he said, I took the two talents and I invested them. 
And I now have, now have four talents. And Jesus said the same thing to him. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful for a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. <coughs> but the fellow had the one talent said, I better not invest that. I'm, I know my master's a hard man. I better just take care of it. And I saw you out. I need to dig a hole and put the money in the hole. And so when the master came back, he said, I've got the one talent. And the master said, uh, take that talent from him and give it to the man that has ten talents. Now you listen carefully. Communism says, and America says, take the money away from those who work and give it to those who loaf. Jesus said, no, you take the, what little the folks lo loaf have and you give it to those that work. That's what he said. And uh, <coughs> he, he didn't say, take the money from those that work and give it to those that have Ill illegitimate babies. He didn't say that. He didn't say give it to fellows that are loafing, sitting watching uh, their VCR movies on television and not working, and uh, with their big pot bellies sitting there watching television. He didn't say that. He said you're supposed to work, and he said if you don't invest what you have, you ought not to have. He get to keep what he gave you. Now, what is this? God, God is saying he invests in producers. God invests in producers. I preached a sermon years ago here entitled, God Plays the Stock Market. I was talking about this. God looks down and sees somebody doing something, and God gives him more of what he has. He said to the fellow, the loafer, he said, take his one talent away. He's not going to make any money off my investment. Take that money away from him and give it to the fellow that has ten, talent, ten talents, because he'll make some money on my investment. That's what he's saying. I want to invest in him. Um, now, I want to say something. If you want God to invest in you, then you become investable. You be sure that you're doing something. God does not invest in people that are not doing something and not producing. A uh, preacher said to me not long ago, a missionary <coughs> said, <coughs> well, he said, Rick Martin, our, our, our former student, Rick Martin, probably the most productive missionary in the world today in, in, in the Philippine Islands. And um, he, said, uh, he said, well, he's, he's not so hot. If folks had given me the money they've given to him and invested in my ministry or to invest in his, I'd have a ministry as big as his. I said, no, you wouldn't. I said, when he started as a missionary, nobody invested in him. The truth is, God did not want to invest in him unless he was doing something. And I said, the honest truth is, if you want God to invest in you, <coughs> then you do something for God yourself, and then God will invest more in you. Use what you've got. God won't give you more unless you use what you've got. The title of my sermon tonight is, God Helps Those Who Help Themselves. A fellow came to me several years ago, and he said, uh, <coughs> he said, uh, Dr. Hiles, he said, I pastor a little church. And he said, I, I've noticed people give Dr. Lee Robertson in the Highland Park Baptist Church in Chattanooga. This has been 10 or 15 years ago. He said, uh, <coughs> that people always give, in, give in money, Dr. Robertson. He said, that's not fair. He said, why doesn't somebody give money to me? I've got the little church that needs the money. He's got the big church that doesn't need it. Of course, big churches need it like little churches do. But uh, <coughs> why, why don't they give the money to me? And I, I said, let me ask you a question. If you had some money to invest, would you invest it in you, Arlie Robertson? I said, if you wanted to get dividends and rewards from your investment, would you invest it in a guy like you that's doing nothing, who said, if I had something, I'd do something. But if I said, I have nothing, I won't do anything. I said, would you invest it in you or Lee Robertson? He looked at me, and these are the words he said. He said, you just changed my life. You just changed my life. And that fellow went to work with what he had, and God began to invest in him, and he invested that, and God invested in, in him more. And today, he pastors a great church, and God is investing some money in him. Now listen, you quit sitting there on your blessed assurance and complaining because God hasn't given you anything, and you use what you've got. I said, God helps those who help themselves. Now, that's what this parable is all about. Let me go, if you would, please, without your turning to it, to the, the, that, that very famous verse, uh, ver, the passage that says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, He increaseth strength. Even the youth <coughs> shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now I want you to notice something there. Several things in, in that passage. First place is this. He says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Renew means they had some before. The fellow said, I've got some strength, so I'll use it for God. And God said, I'll give you some more strength. 
Now, if you don't use what you got for God, God won't give you anything else to use. Because if you won't use a little for God, you won't use a lot for God. God knew that this, this missionary I was talking about a while ago, if, if God allowed investment in him like he has in Rick Martin, God knew that he would not build a great church and a great school. He will build him a nice house on the mission field. I'm simply saying if God can't trust you with a little, God won't give you a lot. The way you get more is to use what you have. And so he said, renew their strength. Now also he said this. He said he give a power to the faint. Would you tell me how they got faint? They got faint by working. That's how they got faint. He didn't say he giveth power to the lazy. He didn't say he giveth power to the limp. He didn't say he giveth power to the passive. He said he giveth power to the faint. What is he saying? He's saying, you show me a man that will give me what he's got. You show me a man that will use his own strength to me. And I will invest and give him more strength. But if he won't use his own strength, I won't give him more strength. Then he said, renew their strength. I reminded you on a recent Sunday morning, that word renew means exchange strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall exchange their strength. Shall, shall exchange my strength for his strength. But if I don't have any strength, I can't exchange it. So I come and I say, Dear God, what strength I have is yours. What money I have is yours. What life I have is yours. What talent I have is yours. I don't sit and wait and say, Oh God, you give me some more talent and I'll use it. You give me more strength and I'll use it. No, sir. God said you use what you have. And once you use what you have, if you're producing, I'll reinvest in you. And I'll, I'll give you more talents to invest. He gives strength, but not until we use what we have. I want you to notice this. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings eagles. They shall run and not be weary. It didn't say they shall not be weary while they run. It said they'll run. And while they're running, God will let them keep on running. But you've got to start running. It said they shall walk and not faint. It means you, you start walking. You don't, you don't get the strength and then start. You start and get the strength. God says to you, whatever you have, use it, use it, use it. Oh, if I could preach like Lee Robertson, I'd be a great preacher. You start off preaching like you can. If I could be a great soul winner like so-and-so, I'd, I'd witness. You start off witnessing like you. Put your pencils up and listen to me, son. I tell you, every time I'm going to get your name and start calling you. I want you to hear what i got to say. I'm preaching to you. I'm not giving you a lecture. I'm preaching to you. I'm simply saying, use what you've got. Use what you've got. Use what you've got. God said, I will, if you will run, I'll give you strength. He didn't say, I'll give you strength so you can run. He said, if you'll walk, uh, you won't faint. He didn't say, I'll give you strength so you, so you can walk. He said, you start walking. You listen to me. God will give you strength. And God will give you power. But you've got to start it. My car says to me, you start me and I'll run, but I won't start myself. I've got to start that car. I've got to put that ignition, uh, key in the ignition. I've got to put the, the, the stick in park. I've got to turn the thing to the right. And then I've got to put the stick in drive. And the car says, I'll take care of it from now on. I've got the gasoline. I've got the power. I've got the energy. But you've got to start me. Then... In other areas, he gives strength, but not until we use what we have. He gives encouragement, but not until we encourage ourselves. I preached the other morning on that. said, David encouraged himself. He encouraged himself. You encourage yourself. And then God says, he'll encourage you once you've encouraged yourself. You don't sit there and say, oh God, I'm discouraged, encourage me. No, sir! You sit there and all of a sudden you say, I've got a burden, but my name is written in heaven. I'm, Jesus is my Savior. God is my Father. Heaven's my home. Bible's my book. Holy Spirit's my comforter. And God is my Father. And, uh, and the rapture's my hope. And all of a sudden you say, life is not so bad at all. And God said, that guy's encouraging himself, so I will encourage him too. But you, God will not encourage you till you encourage yourself. And God will not strengthen you till you strengthen yourself. And God will not work for you till you work yourself. God is simply saying, you use what you have. Then I'll give you something else. He gives power to the faint. 
the faint. He gives power to those who grow weary. And by the way, the word faint, I checked it today. It means, it means those who grow weary in service. He giveth power to those that grow weary in service. He giveth power to those that get tired on a bus route. He giveth power to those that get tired of soul winning or in soul winning. He gives power to those who get weary or tired in building a Sunday school class. He says, when you are willing to do it, when you don't have the strength, but use what strength you have, God said, I will give power to those who grow weary in serving me. You want strength? Use what strength you have. You want power? Use what power you have. You want courage? Use what courage you have. You keep, I, I like this statement. You keep on going and God will keep you going. Let me say it again. You keep on going and God will keep you going. But if you don't keep on going, God won't keep you going. And God won't start you going. He will keep you going, but He won't start you going. I've preached a heap of times in these 43 years. Listen to me now. I've preached a heap of times in these 43 years. I preach sometimes when I couldn't wait to get to the pulpit. I preach sometimes I want to get up and, and, and do karate on the music director and say, Sit down, Buster. Let me up there. I can't wait till you get through. I want to preach. But I've gone to the pulpit sometime when I, I didn't want to preach. I've gone to the pulpit sometime when I was too sick to preach. I've gone to the pulpit sometime when I was too discouraged to preach. I've gone to the pulpit sometime when I was too mentally weary to preach. And I've gotten up and I said, Okay, God, I, I don't think I can preach a sermon, but there's one thing I can do. I can start a sermon. And brother, before I know it, I'm loose as a goose. I don't know how go loose a goose is. Before I know it, I'm as loose as a goose. And all of a sudden, I'm preaching. And what happens? God said, That old boy's going to preach anyhow. That old boy's getting started. He hadn't got enough gasoline to get finished, so I'll give him some gas while he's preaching so he can keep on going. And that's the kind of guy God blesses. God doesn't bless you because you're pretty. God doesn't bless you because you're intellectual. God doesn't bless you because you're brilliant. God doesn't bless you because you're, you're uh, eloquent. God blesses you because you take what little you've got and say, I'm going to give it. If I fall over, I'm going to give it. And God said, that guy, got a, he, he's got to start at least, and I'm going to help him finish. Same thing is true with battles. You're going to have some battles in life. I think if I live long enough, I may have some. You're going to have some battles in life. You say, well, I can't fight those battles. You don't have to fight those battles. You start to fight. You start. Give me what you got. And God looks down and says, I will keep you going if you will keep on going. But you look and say, I just don't think I can do that. God says, okay, you won't do it because I'm not going to help you. But God said, you look at that battle, you look at that enemy, you look at that, that, that opposition, you look at that mountain you've got to climb, and you say, mountain, I don't think I can climb you, but I can start up. And you get started up that mountain, and God said, there's a guy, he's going to use all he's got. And God said, if he'll use all he's got, I'll give him all I've got. And that's why he said, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Wait a minute now, hold it. All powers given to me in heaven and earth, go ye. Go ye. Now you don't go, you don't get my power. You go, you get my power. What was the qualification here? Go ye. Go ye. He said, if you want my power, go ye. He said, I've got all power. That's, by, by the way, that's a lot of power. I've got all power. And he said, if you will go, I'll give you that power if you will not. And I won't give it to you if you go. College student. Stock college student came to my office one day several years ago. He said, I said, a son, have a job yet? No, Dr. Hiles. I don't plan to work. I said, then go home. We don't want your kind here. He said, well, God will take care of me. No, He won't. You say, hold it, Brother Hiles. Didn't, didn't God say, uh, they, they take care of it? Yes, God will take care of you, 
But God will not take care of you until you are doing all you can to take care of yourself. God's not going to feed your family for you till you've done all you can to feed your family. Hey, when I was in college, in, in, uh, in a kid preacher in East Texas, that little church, Grange Hall Baptist Church, when those three men saw to it that I didn't get my salary, for weeks and weeks I didn't get my salary, we didn't have anything to eat on. So I got me a lawnmower, bought me a lawnmower. Didn't have the power mowers in those days. Didn't have electric mowers. Didn't have gas mowers. They had, you pushed more. You pushed it and pulled it back. And you pushed it again and pulled it back. And you pushed it again. That's back when men were men. That's the way my wife mowed the yard when I was pastor there in East Texas. I got me a push lawnmower. I said to my people, you pay me a dollar, I'll mow your yard. Uh, and, and, and the pastor of the church was out mowing the yard. Somebody came to me and said, what you doing? I said, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not getting paid, and I've got to have some money, and I'm mowing yards for a dollar apiece. And it took me a, 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 oh, a half a day to mow a yard. I'm mowing yards for a dollar apiece. They said, you can't make a living mowing a yard, mowing yards. I said, I'm not trying to make a living mowing yards. If I'll start, God will help me, and God did help me. I, listen. I know, I know some fellows come to Hiles Anderson College and they have a profession. And so they look for a job in their profession because their profession, uh, maybe engineering or something, you make $30,000 a year. And so they come to my office and say, I haven't had a job. I've been here six months, haven't found a job. I say, why? Well, I've applied everywhere I can. I said, have you applied at McDonald's? Have you applied at Burger King? I mean, uh, well, no, I'm an engineer. I wouldn't give you a dime for your Christianity. Now, if you can find a job as an engineer, that's wonderful. But, brother, you sit there and let your wife starve to death and your kids starve to death because you're not willing to stoop down to get a job to make six or eight dollars an hour. You want to make thirty or forty thousand dollars a year. I'm simply saying you'll not amount to anything. God said you start it and I'll pick it up, but I won't finish it unless you start it. On the other hand. I know men who come to college here who couldn't find a job in their own profession. They're professional men. And they've taken a job sweeping out places or being custodians in some apartment house somewhere. And they've taken those jobs. And God has looked down and said to those men, said about those men, look at there. That guy that made thirty-five, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year back home, that maybe as an engineer or something, and I'm not picking on engineers tonight. That's the only thing I can think of right now. And, uh, and uh, uh, made thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 back home. Look at that guy. He's sweeping out a, a plant as a custodian, making $4.50 an hour. And God said, Holy Spirit, go down and work on a guy that needs an engineer and have somebody hire that fella. What? I'm simply saying, God Almighty will not help you until you help yourself. Oh, America needs some character. We're dying for lack of character. You've heard the story, and I won't belabor you with it, all of it. We needed a car. A church a hundred miles away had called me to be the pastor. First little church I pastored up in the country, weekend pastorate. A hundred miles away, had no way to get there. I'd gotten there the first Sunday or first Sunday or two because some friends that pastored probably 25 miles away <coughs> drove us up there. We couldn't do that regularly. Had to have a car. I only had $7 to my name. I bought two one-way bus tickets from Gar Mar Marshall, Texas to Dallas, Texas. One way. Didn't have enough money to buy a round trip. Went up on the, seventh, uh, the, the, the top floor of the educational building of the First Baptist Church of Marshall and got on my knees and prayed for God to give me a car. Now, I didn't sit there and say, God, give me a car, give me a car, give me a car, and bring it up here to the fourth floor of the educational building for me. I didn't say that. I went down and bought two tickets, took off for Dallas, Texas, and asked God to give me a car. The car was not in Marshall. The car was in Dallas. Brother, we drove back a 1941 Dodge. This is about 1947. We drove back a 1941 Dodge. I called it Jezebel because it was cantankerous. And that treated me like Jezebel treated Elijah. But I, we drove back a 1941 Dodge that we would never have had if we hadn't have taken the $7 we had and gone to Dallas. I'm so tired. Listen, 
Let me just, I'm, I'm going to parenthesize here and say a word to you single college boys. You have not any business in the world dropping out of school because of finances. Not one bit. What's wrong with you? You'll never pastor a church unless you can make it through school. And brother, if these guys can make it through school with a wife and three and four and five and six and eight kids, and they can make it through school, you guys that are single can make it through school. You'd cut out eating all your Big Macs and eat at the dormitory like you ought to. Get you a bicycle instead of a 1990 car. No reason in this world for an able-bodied young man who's single not to make it through Howells Anderson College. Start it. God will not help you till you help yourself. And you squander what you've got. Well, that's what this guy did. This guy, he said, I was afraid of my master. He went back and buried it. God said, hey, I'll take it from you. you you're not, I'm not getting anything from you. Why should I invest in you? Same thing's true about the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Now listen carefully to this. This is doctrinal. The fullness of the Holy Spirit doesn't come first. You don't get alone big for God's power, and then after you get God's power, you go to work. You go to work while you're begging for God's power. A lot of young men think, well, the way to get the power of God, and by the way, the power of God is not just for preacher boys, it's for every Christian. The Bible said it's for your sons and daughters and handmaids and servants. Young men, old men, young women, old women, everybody. But you don't get the power of God by going somewhere alone and saying, I- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beg for the power of God, and as soon as I get the power of God, I'm going to go out and do something for God. No, sir! You take what strength you've got and go soul winning with it. You take what strength you've got and go preaching with it. You take what strength you've got and build a Sunday school class with it. You take what strength you've got and build a bus route with it. You take what strength you've got and use it for God. And God said, if you'll beg me while you use what you have, I'll give you more. But if you won't use what you have, God will never give you His power. Never will. I want to remind you that Moody was already pastoring and having a successful pastorate when he was filled with the Holy Spirit on Wall Street one day in New York City. I want to remind you when the Holy Spirit struck him in New York on Wall Street, New York City, he sought the re- refuge in the home of a friend. He got to the friend's home and said, Could I go to your bedroom, please, and be alone for a while? And God's mighty power came on Dwight L. Moody. He said that he preached the same sermon that we had five people saved. Now he has ten people saved. But I want you to notice he used to have five people saved before he got filled. He said... The same sermon he used to preach and have ten people saved. He has a hundred people saved now. But I want you to notice, he was preaching before he got the mighty power of God. He was winning souls before he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he was having ten people saved on those sermons before the mighty power came on him. I'm saying, if you want God's power on you, go to work now while you beg and plead for the power of God. I want to remind you, Christmas Evans was already pastoring when he was filled with the Holy Spirit. When he was knocked off of his horse, as he was riding his circuit, he was already pastoring. I want you to notice that, that John Wesley was already preaching. When at four o'clock one morning, after having prayed all night long with sixty preachers, and all of a sudden he knew what it was for the first time in his life to have the mighty power of God on him, I want you to know he was already preaching when that mighty power came on him. I want you to know that Savonarola was already preaching when God's power came on him one day in the pulpit. And I want to serve notice to you... God will not give you what you want until you're using what you have of that quality already. You want the power of God? Use what power you've got. As you do, you beg. Preacher called me this week. I returned. I wasn't in. Returned the call. He said, "Brother Hiles, my church is going down and down and down." He said, "I I don't know what to do." He said, "I really think I know what I need. I need God's power." And he said, I can't go to the pulpit. Now, this is last this week. He said, Thursday or Friday, he said, Dr. House, I can't go to the pulpit next Sunday without the power of God. And I said, then you'll not get the power of God. I said, you walk to the pulpit Sunday. Brother, if you don't have the power of God on you, you've still got a mighty good story to tell. Tell them that Jesus saves. Tell them they're lost. Tell them that they're going to hell. 
Tell them that Jesus died to save them. And while you're preaching, beg. And while you're begging, preach. And while you're begging, work. And while you're working, beg. Little mother, how can you get God's strength? You keep going with your own strength. Little lady rearing your children by yourself. Your husband left you in front of the woman. Or was prematurely taken by death. And you've got to be mother and father. You're tired and weary. How can you get God's strength? You keep on using your strength. Parents with a broken heart. How can you get God's strength in your life to bear the burden you have because of a wayward child? Use your own strength. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. God's not going to invest in a quitter. God knows whether you'll quit or not. And if God knows you'll quit, He'll let you flop. But if God knows that you're not going to quit, listen, I've told God many times, I'm going to make this thing. If I've got to, I'll do it by myself. Now, I'd like you to help me. But I'm going to make it. If I have to go by myself, it's up to you. I've told him many times, it's going to be, a, it's going to be pretty embarrassing. I've been preaching for years, you'd help folks keep on going. I'm going to keep on going. It's going to hurt your reputation if you don't keep me going. I'm going to keep on going. And God looks down and says, There's a fella who will go anyhow. I want to invest in that. I want to invest in a guy that won't quit. You students that turn back and quit college, don't you expect a miracle ever in your life? You Benedict Arnolds, you Judas Iscariots, you John Marks, quitters, well, I'm not quitting. I'm just going home. Well, what in the world do you call quitting? I'm not a quitter. I'm just quitting. Do you know that's why they call them quitters? Because they quit. I'm not an eater. I'm, I'm not an eater. God will never bless you. God looks down and he sees some student, and God says to that God a student says, "I'm going to make it through college." How are you going to do it? I don't know, God. I need your help, but I'm going to do it. I'm not going to. Do it. I, I often say, don't you leave that college till Dr. Evans puts your suitcase on the road out in front. I'm tired. <laughs> well, God bless you. I'd hate you, you, you young squirts, 18, 19, 20, and 25 years old. Well, I'm tired. I'd hate to have a 63-year-old old codger outwork me. I'd be ashamed of myself if I were you. Well, I'm tired. Well, I'm tired too. But I'm going to keep on going. And God's going to look down and say to me, He's going to keep on going. I want to invest in that guy. Why don't you get God to invest in you? Dad having a hard time making ends meet. You keep on going. God will help you. College husband having a tough time. Keep on going. You heard that testimony. If you were you folks that miss these ordination services, you, you're missing it. We had one of the best services last night we've had in this church. I feel sorry. Some of you folks that invest in these preacher boys and teach them, looks like to me you'd want to come and see them ordain. Well, everything's quiet. The teachers are afraid to not say an amen, and the students are afraid to say amen. <laughs> anyway, last night, you heard about that, young, that, heard that testimony. You heard it. You heard it. That guy stood up last night. Who's on the market? Stood up last night and told how he was in business, how he and his wife had saved for years to build a house, and they built a house of their dreams. You sailors, be still. Be still while I'm preaching, sailors. Unless you're so bad sick, you're about to throw up. And no talking. If you've got to leave, leave. If you've got to leave, go ahead. I'm preaching. I don't want you sitting there talking. He told how, he's, how he was... His wife had saved and saved and saved. Finally, they built their own house themselves. 
and got the house of their dreams built. And all of a sudden, God called him to preach. And he told how he, they never got to live in the house for one day. How they'd come here and live and almost in a hell. And she'd never, he said, she'd never complained one time. Not one time, he said. No wonder he's got a good church. The church that's, he's building a good church. And no wonder God's going to bless the fellow. You wives of students. He said, but the house, I don't think I can make it another day. You don't have to make it another day. You just make it another step. And once you, once you keep on going, God says, I'll invest in you and I'll bless you. You poor college girl. Single girl. You don't know what a new dress looks like. You don't have enough money to buy your toothpaste. I know, I can smell your breath all the way to the platform. I wish you fellows here could sit in the front row, by the way. It just reminded me of that. See, I don't see how I can make it through school. God will take you through school if you just keep on going. Just keep on going. Husband whose wife has left you and taken the children. Boy, I don't know anything worse than that. A man that loves his wife wants to be a good husband. If I were a judge, I wouldn't give the kids always to the to the ladies. Say what you want to, women. Here's a gal runs off with some with some man. The judge gives her the kids. I'd give them to the husband that was faithful, wanted to keep the marriage together. You guys having a tough time, and you're home, homesick, and you can't see your own children, but it once every few months. Keep on going. Keep on going. God will invest in you. Parents with a sick child, keep on going. A guy said to me the other day, when I preached a little bit like this on the road, he said, well, he said, Dr. Howard, you can't lift yourself up with your own bootstraps. I said, no, but you can pull. When God sees you pulling, he'll lift you up. But God will not lift you up until you start pulling. Back to the service station in Marshall. The whole sermon's illustrated right there. If we hadn't have taken off and got in that car and started that car and driven two blocks, we wouldn't have gotten that five dollars. Well, you say, well, that guy was coming over there before you ever before you ever left home, but it was the Holy Spirit that led him over there because he knew what we were going to do. I could tell you story after story after story how God is invested in the life of this little old preacher. I decided years ago I was going to be worth his investment. Brother, you put a buck, I'm sorry, a dollar, uh, you put a dollar in the First Baptist Church of Hammond and Howells Anderson College and you will not find a better investment for heaven in the whole world than that. Preacher said to me, hey, you're so lucky. You're so lucky. This guy, Mendenhall, he's going to print all your sermons and in, this, in, 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 in volumes of books and a set of books you're so lucky forgive me for saying it but I said you scoundrel you he was a preacher of a sort I said you have somebody attack you like I've been attacking you keep on going for six or eight and nine months and you just don't quit and you stay in there and God will say I think I'll invest in that fellow I think I'll invest in that fellow God's looking for good investments He's looking for good investments. You become investable. You become a good opportunity for God to invest. He helps those who help themselves. Don't you stop. Keep on going. Don't you stop. There are many, many people that stopped when they felt like they couldn't go any farther that one more step and God had picked you up. Talking to folks tonight, five talented people. I've never been a five talented person. I can't sing. I can't play the piano. I can't play any musical instrument. I can play the radio if it's easy. I can't draw. Well, I go to the bank and draw, but I can't. I can't. I can't draw. 
All I can do is holler. <laughs> That's all I can do. But boy, can I holler. I don't have the five talents. I've just got the one talent. That's all I got. But God said the same thing to the guy that had two talents that brought back two more. He said to the guy that had five, brought back five more. And that little fellow who had the one talent, he'd gone out and he'd invested that one talent and brought back two. God looked at him and God had said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make you rule over many. He'd have said the very same thing. And that's exactly what I've done. But now wait a minute. You invest that one talent. You know what God would have done? If that guy had brought back two talents, I bet you, I bet you. It's wrong to bet, isn't it? I'll wager. <laughs> if he brought back two talents... I expect God would have said, okay, I'll let you keep those two talents. And I reckon he would have brought back four. And I reckon after a while he brought back those four, God would have said, you keep those four and see what you can do. And I bet you, I reckon, I wager, I think, he had brought back eight. And God just keeps on investing. And keeps on investing. And keeps on investing. You know, that, that night when I this building was burning, the building over here and the building over here burning, and this building was three months old, two or three months old, and then knocked holes in those walls back there with, with axes so the, the smoke could get out and so they could, could get the water to shoot it over there to the building over there that was burning. And I, I was standing here put with my hands on the outside wall. I didn't have this part then on the outside wall saying, Oh, God, don't let this building burn. We just built it. We worked so hard for two years to put it up. Don't let it burn. Somebody brought me a piece of paper. No, no, I'm sorry. I got back home. And there's, there was a, a, a note. Anyway, Russell Anderson had contacted the house and left word. He had sent $500. That's the first time anybody ever given me $500 in my life or my work. Ever had it before. God said, I want to invest $500 in that young man. And now God says, I want to invest 250,000 in him with his books. And God has reached down, and I've never catered to anybody. You ask Russell Anderson, he'll tell you, I've never asked him for a dime. I've asked him for a million dollars several times, but never for a dime. I have yet to ask anybody for anything. I have yet to ask anybody for any money at all. I want God to invest in me. I'm not a beggar, I'm a preacher. And I believe this with all of my soul. If you will just do, use what you've got. Use what strength you've got. Use what power you've got. Use what money you've got. Use what influence you've got. To whatever degree, whatever thing you have, God will give you more of what you have if you use what you already have. If you want more strength, you use the strength you have. You want more encouragement, you encourage yourself. You want more power, use the power you have. God said, I'll renew your strength. I'll make you investable. And bless God, one of these days, God looked down and said, I believe that's a good investment. I think I'll just sink a few million dollars there. Or I think I'll just sink a little extra, little extra power there. I'm going to give a little extra strength there. That's the way you get it. You don't sit back and whine. Well, you sure are lucky. Yeah, yeah I like it a little. T- the harder I work, the luckier I get. I like that. I like that. And the harder I work, the more palatable my work is for God to invest in it. Use what you got. Father, bless the sermon. 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 What you got.